Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic. I'm the host of the Android Factory. I know it's been a little while, but let's jump right back into it. Here we have this one quote app that we've been working on here. If we go ahead and rerun things, we'll see that immediately upon launching the app, we fetch, well actually it happens very quickly here, but we're fetching a, a quote from a particular endpoint, from an API. We'll go ahead and actually cause a delay here, adding in 1500 milliseconds. We'll see that it kind of shows the default state here, which is an old quote, and then there's a network operation happening in the background. But we don't really have a good way of displaying this information to the user. We don't really have a good understanding of, oop, there's something going on right now. We should show a loading wheel. We should show some kind of UI, whatever the case is. That means something is refreshing. That's what we're going to build out here today. And we're going to explore a little bit of functional programming in the process. So as we get started here, smash that like button, subscribe if you're brand new, and let's get right into it. I'm going to go ahead and unstash some changes that we already had. So we are going to, sorry, click pop stash and then we are going to pop the stash. And that brings in a couple different changes here to our classes, and one of which, or to our code, one of which is the addition of this network operation class. So as I mentioned here, we don't really have a good way at the moment of describing the different states between loading, successes, and failures. But this network operation interface allows us to actually do that quite easily. And in all the different cases here, we have the relevant data, right? In a success case here, we have the data that we were looking for. So, you know, the, in this case, a quote that we're trying to fetch. And then in the failure case here, we also have a reason. You can always build this out to have more information, but basically just text as saying why this had failed. In our loading state here, I went ahead and added in a placeholder. So we have an optional placeholder. Maybe we have stale data that we want to display. And then we're obviously refreshing for new data. And that placeholder here would allow us to do so. Sorry if you hear some thunder in the background. We got a pretty nasty storm rolling in. Down here, we're going to jump into a couple of these different functions later, but this is where we have some functional programming stuff. But uh, let's move over to the actual composable that builds this screen here. So this daily quote screen, right? Beforehand, we used to just be getting an app state dot quote value here. We were not getting a network operation. So I went ahead and just updated the function to now get that. And now inside of our column here, inside of our UI, we can do certain things like this, right? We'll have a classic when statement, when that operation is a failure, show our failure state when it's loading, show our loading state success and so on, right? And that's all good and well, that works pretty nicely. Um, there's really not too much wrong with that, but we've kind of improved the readability and the visibility here on uh, this network operation based on some of those functional programming aspects. So really quickly, something that accomplishes the same thing, but definitely looks a little bit nicer and looks more Kotlin friendly is we can do things like uh, network operation on loading and we can then call, you know, network operation dot on success. And then you can even call network operation dot on failure. And all these functions come from what we've declared inside of this class. We'll review them in a second here, but uh, actually, let's go ahead and review it right now. Why not, right? This is our functional programming side of things. We have our on success, on failure, and on loading. And inside of each one of these, let's just look at the on success because they all operate the same way. Um, they take in a particular lambda here that's going to be invoked. And then internally to the function, this function says if this is success, so if this network operation is an instance of this success uh, you know, class, then we're going to go ahead and call this particular action and because it is a success we know we have data available so we can call the lambda and pass in the data right and that's basically how every single one of these functions work we say on success on failure on loading if this is true then we're just going to go ahead and call our lambda now this last little bit here return this actually kind of adds in some builder uh, like pattern which we'll see a nice advantage of in a second but very simply here the on failure and the on loading is just asking if this is on loading if this is on failure and then we just go ahead and pass different data that we have in to our Lambda here. So flipping back to the uh, daily quote screen, yes, we can do this network operation on loading, on success and on failure. That builder pattern will actually allow us to remove, sorry, this and this. And now we can very easily call something uh, or you know have this kind of like cascading effect of on loading. And then this is our loading block on success this is our success block, and then on failure, this is our failure block. And you'll see in each one of these blocks as well, the tooltips that are present, we then have in the on failure lambda, we have the error string here, right? This is the error uh, reason, and then this is our quote here, and then this is our like placeholder quote, 
which may or may not be present. So we'll leave it like that. So yeah, we'll declare it as optional there, right? And everything else is uh, non-null, which is great. So at the surface level, it looks very, very similar to this when statement, right? Because when this operation is of this type, then we're gonna do this, then we're gonna do that or that. And that's basically what we're doing here. This just looks a little bit friendlier. This looks a little bit more Kotlin like, uh, you know, this kind of feels a little Java-y. But functionally, they are doing the same thing. Um, there are just a couple differences along the way that lead me to prefer, uh, you know, this style of code here. The last thing I'll say here about this block or about this pattern here is that there are two other aspects that kind of make this a bit more functional. Uh, one of them is a pure function and another one is side effects, right? So if you examine any one of these individual functions, they are uh, extremely pure. They're very obvious what's happening. They're very easy to test as well. You can kind of, you know, create a particular instance of the network operation, run it through this function, and you should be able to determine exactly what's happening. You should be able to test this very easily. We absolutely can. And there are no side effects here, right? The only thing that ever ends up happening is in the positive case. When this is not a, uh, a success, when this is a failure or a loading, we're not doing anything else on top of it. We're simply only doing something when it is a success. So there's no uh, you know, side effect nature that's going on here. There's nothing that says, oh, when this function's called and this is true versus that is true, the function acts differently. No, this function will act the same every single time with a very little bit of logic along the way. This is kind of some of those, you know, functional programming concepts that I think blend really, really nicely with Compose and just, you know, readability in general, it makes things very simple. Enough talk, let's go ahead and implement a little bit more here. So below this block here, we've kind of pulled out the daily quote content into its own function. That is actually what's going to, uh, you know, fuel this screen that we see here on the right. And uh, we can just pass in particular information here to kind of fill in the gaps. So basically in our on success, we're going to say, and then our on click here, we're just simply going to call the on favorite clicked that was passed into this. And then we are just going to invoke it with the quote there. And now everything is hooked up, right? And we really care for the success case, but we have all the other information that we need, or we have all these other cases that we can also account for. So now at this point here, let's, uh, let's come up with something for our failure case. All right, folks, and there we have it. So on the on loading state here, we're going to call our daily quote content. And if we have any uh, placeholder information, we will use that, right? So if we have an old quote here some, for some reason, we will just display that information. Otherwise, we'll go with loading. Same thing with author. We'll say Android factory false. And then obviously in the on click, there's really nothing to do because, um, you know, we don't really want to handle the on click while we're loading. The success case is pretty straightforward. We've already handled that. And then our failure case here, uh, you know, it's quite nice, right? We're able to tell the user exactly what the error reason is as long as our network operation is configured properly. So we'll go ahead and just pop that in as the quote text. So it'll just appear as the main text inside of that card. And then we just have some other, you know, hard coded bits here uh, to make the UI work. But the point is, is that now this daily quote screen, this whole uh, composable is extremely in tune with what operations are happening from the user side, right? What the device is actually doing. So it'll handle our loading state, our success and our failure state. So this is a pretty functional piece, uh, pretty functional composable here. I'm gonna obviously have to go around and change some things because our app state here is only using a quote of the day. Uh, you know, so we're gonna have to change some stuff. So we're gonna actually make this a network operation. This will then be network operation of quote. And a pretty nice thing that comes along with this is that we can very easily just create a loading state here at this point um, for our app state. So we don't actually need to force some kind of initialization here. We can just remove that as well uh, because realistically we are going to be in a loading state when this app first boots up. Let's see what else is going on here. This is gonna be called network operation instead. So we're gonna need that on favorite click will handle our on click. I think there's one more bit here uh, that we need to change in our view model. Uh, yes, because obviously we need to change around the repository to actually give us the correct version, right? Because instead our app state, or sorry, the, the repository was just giving us a nullable app state dot quote. Um, we obviously want to instead return a network operation here of quote. All right, and we're just going to return something completely different here. So we're going to say quote service, uh, get quote of the day. We'll call the run block on it. I think it's a pretty good use case. Uh, and then we're just going to say if is successful because we are inside of our retrofit response at this point inside the run block. 
we're then going to return the network operation dot success where our data is going to be the quote mapper uh, dot build from and at this point here we need uh, nope it's not from response it's going to be body dot first and then otherwise here we're going to say network operation dot failure and our reason is going to be um, let's just go with unable to fetch quote of the day perfect and i think that's about it i think we're just going to cut those other blocks out and lovely now we've updated our repository layer to return the network operation here which is really nice uh, one other thing we're going to do beforehand though is yes we probably don't need to let that but uh, before we actually go ahead and do the network operation, which is this one right here, right? What we're actually going to want to do is we're going to want to um, tell our state that, hey, we are loading, hey, we are updating the quote of the day. So quite simply here, we can just say uh, app state dot update. We're going to return at update uh, it dot copy, and we're going to say our quote of the day is now a network operation dot loading. We could enhance this to actually fill in our placeholder here if we want to, but for now, let's just leave it as loading. So we basically update our state saying, hey, we're about to be loading. Then we go ahead and fetch the quote of the day, and then we're gonna update it here. It looks like we were doing some null checks, which we no longer need to do. So we can probably just set it as that and make our lives a little bit simpler. And perfect. <laughs> so that actually looks uh, rather funny. Let's see if it looks good all in one line. So now our, uh, our our quote of the day function is going to update it to loading and then we're going to make our network call here and just stuff in whatever we get back. Hopefully it's successful but if it's not we'll obviously handle uh, the error case as well. But uh, I believe that might be everything that we need to do here so let's go ahead and rerun this and coming back to life here everything seemed to work. I think I just need to kind of trim something down here kind of uh, force it to take a little bit longer. So let's delay for 1500 again. And let's actually see how that modifies if our UI reacts accordingly. Yep, so we see we're in that loading state and then we see that we get to the actual state that we care for here. Brilliant, I know the loading state isn't anything too fancy here, but uh, this does kind of conclude what I wanted to talk about here. I'm gonna leave that in there because for a little bit of extra credit, if you stick around, we're gonna make a little bit nicer of a loading state here. But basically, you know, the one thing we wanted to talk about is our functional programming concepts here inside of our networking layer, inside of our uh, you know, on success, on failure, on loading states, which I think is just really, really powerful uh, because you can end up with composables that just look really, really good, really, really clean, and are just in tune with your your you know devices, networking opportunities, or uh, you know whatever the case is. Right? You might need to get it from an API. You might need to get some user input. You might need to get it from a database. Whatever the case is, um, you know, having some way to actually describe what the state of the operation is and where it is and then obviously handling failure cases as well is just really 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 powerful stuff so if you made it this far thank you so much smash that like button subscribe to help me out if you want to stick around for a little bit more extra credit we're going to make it a little bit nicer of a loading state down here um and and that's about it so i'll catch you guys in the next one but for anyone hanging along here we are just gonna uh, you know, basically come up with a simple little text here to, to be in tune with our network operation. All right, so let's very simply here just put a text here and we're going to, uh, you know, kind of enhance this as we go along here. So we could say when, we can make use of that older variant, right? When our network operation is all those different types. So we'll use the IDE here to help us out. And then our success, let's say, you know, like up to date or something along those lines. Uh, let's see what else we want to do here. We're gonna to have to probably attach a pretty big modifier to get it to where we want. So let's just simply say modifier. Uh, let's go with our padding. I'm gonna to say top, I don't know, 48 dp. Definitely gonna put a color on this as well. Or sorry, a background here. Uh, our color is going to come from our status, so we're gonna need that in a hot second, but let's just go with color.red for right now. And then our shape here is going to be material theme dot shapes dot medium. I think we'll also put, uh, sorry, I think we'll also put a uh, clip here to be the exact same, the material theme dot shapes dot medium. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we're gonna have an on click here, sorry, clickable, 
uh, here to force a retry, which we're going to pass in as a parameter here. And then uh, let's just go with our padding and let's say horizontal ADP. Uh, for, let's just see how some of this kind of stuff looks. Uh, we need to get a different color here. So we're going to get a color based on the um, based on our state here. So we're going to also use the animate color as state. Our target value is going to be when our network operation is all these different types here. We're going to, again, look for a couple of different things. So the failure here, we're gonna say color.red, of course, because that's no good. Our loading, let's use uh, teal as kind of our accent color. And then our success, um, can be a purple color. Sure, maybe. Um, let's go ahead and put this as a background color. Background color dot value there. Is that right? Oh, no, we'll need to check on that. We need on retry, obviously. Um, let's just go with on refresh, actually, because it could be a variety of reasons why we're going to click this. Uh, so we'll simply just call in on refresh here. This is going to be a function that returns nothing. We'll obviously need to update our call site here so then we could say on refresh and we'll just do view model dot fetch quote of the day just like that so now we have refresh capabilities in this screen as well which is really really nice um let's see where are we i don't know what color this should be color for the actual text let's just try color dot white for now or maybe i don't know maybe even that Oh, it's not color dog, maybe that dark purple color. Um, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and just give that a run, see how things look. Looks like this UI got a little out of the way. Uh huh, loading up to date. Okay, um, okay, okay, hold on. So that's not that bad. I think we actually might want to make our horizontal 16 and maybe our vertical 8 to make it look a little bit more like a pill there. Yep, um, and then. Sorry, what was it? We are not centered vertically, right? So that horizontally, um, sorry, that has to go on our modifier here. So we will align uh, center horizontally, bring that in. We go ahead and refresh here and we should probably be in a pretty good state. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And it doesn't look bad at all. We kind of animate our uh, background color and stuff like that. And if we go ahead and click it, we do tell, uh, you know, the, the, the app to go ahead and refresh. And I think uh, this API is quite sensitive. So if we go ahead and kind of, you know, like, like fetch too many times in a row. Uh, yep, there we go. We got our error case here. Too many requests obtain an alt key for unlimited access. Zenquotes.io. So we actually have like this error state embedded inside of here. However, why is that not red? I would imagine that would be a failure situation, but I'm assuming that that means that our repository is still somehow building a, ma a, a quote properly. So refreshing their uh, API for the today, the quote of the day and putting it in here, uh, it actually is sending back what seems to be like a successful uh, network request with the quote saying too many requests and the author being zenquotes.8. A, uh, IO. Uh, so our application is uh, fortunately handling things properly, but um, I would love for that to be an error instead. Uh, regardless, that's outside of the scope of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.